Hey everyone, today we are going to be looking at the Lexicon PCM70. This is actually going to be part two of the PCM70 repair, the video I put out a while ago. Uh, that video, we went through a PCM70 and uh, it had a lot of issues. So the display was actually broken on it. Uh, that was the least concern, so there was a lot of digital logic issues in there in terms of some, some decoders that were bad. Uh, some parts of the actual display driver circuit, which were holding some CPU lines down, ultimately ended up being the problem of why it wasn't working. Uh, and after that, there was the problem of slave communication error. So that is where part one of that PCM70 repair video ended. Uh, and part two was going to pick up at that point. So if you've already watched part one, you may notice that this isn't the same PCM70 that I had in part one. The reason is the reason behind that is because that video no longer exists. We will blame technology on that and not the fact that I may have potentially deleted the video. But regardless, it was a trivial repair anyway. It was wasn't very much content to talk about. Basically all it was was the slave Z80 CPU ended up actually being bad. So I purchased a replacement, put it in that unit, and then the slave communication issue was resolved. So after that, I went through and basically finished the repair by replacing some pastors and doing a few other things, which is what I'm going to talk about in this video. So this video is going to kind of pick up where that one ended off and finish the repair that I did on that previous PCM70, and then I will do the same repair to this one. So this one actually works. I'll power it on right now. You can see PCM70 version 2.0 software comes up on the display, and I've actually routed uh, audio through here, and it works. It sounds great. There's actually, you know, no issues with it, except for a few things. One, there's a memory problem. So you can see in the register settings there, I've got some scrambled characters. It's most likely the backup battery that's going bad. So the SRAM contents are probably, you know, corrupted as a result of that. Uh, it doesn't affect operation, though. I'm just not sure why, you know, some of those are there like that. So as part of this, we'll go through the memory reset procedure. We'll test the battery, see if it's bad, replace it if necessary. These use a different lithium cell. I don't actually know if I have those cells, so I may not be able to replace it, at least with that battery in this video, but uh, we'll talk about it anyway. Um, I'm gonna replace capacitors. Somebody's been inside this before. There's a couple screws missing on it. I don't know why they were inside it. I don't know what they were doing. Uh, we're gonna go through it anyway and take a look. Maybe some components have been replaced. Maybe not, still might be all original for all I know. It probably is original. I'm going to repair it the way I would repair it, do all the power supply capacitors, and then probably do some, if not all, of the capacitors in the signal path as well. That's very similar to what I did in the SPX90 Series 2 repair video as well with that Yamaha FX processor. We will begin with this, take the cover off, like take a look inside, and uh, see what's going on. So here we are inside the Lexicon PCM70. This is, like I said, the second one that I've worked on. In the first video, that I did on the PCM70. I really went into a lot of detail of how this worked. How the analog digital conversion works, how the digital analog conversion works, how the digital circuitry works. That was you know, pretty interesting repair. So I would highly recommend watching that video if you are curious about the PCM70 and the way that it works and possibly a similar issue that you may have with yours. Um, that of it being completely dead. So with this video, I'm not gonna repeat everything I talked about in the first video. We're just gonna repair, um, continue with the repair that I would have done with that other PCM70, or that I did do with it, I just no longer have the footage for. So first is the battery, and which lives right up here in the top corner, uh, right here. So this one actually looks like the battery is replaced. It's a, the one they have in here is a vertical standing uh, CR2032 3 volt lithium, and that is used as a battery backup for the onboard SRAM that holds all of your user presets. So it looks like it's repaired, because I don't think that's actually the stock battery that comes in these. And looking at the bottom, actually there's a piece of tape here, pretty sure that's not factory, and it looks like the solder has been done. So we'll test it, I don't know why they put that tape there, but we'll test it and see what our voltages are on it. So we have three volts. Uh, I'm going to leave it for now, I'm not going to bother replacing it again. I mean, these things usually realistically last. 10, 20 years. So it's not a big deal that it's there and it's not hard to replace if I ever need to in the future. So I'll leave that alone. But if yours is dead, that's where it lives. You just simply take it out, insert the new one in there, and then go through the reset procedure on the front panel because you'll probably have corrupted memory during the process of adding and removing that device. 
while we were talking about it, let's just go ahead and actually reset the RAM. Let's see if that resolves our issue with the uh, corrupted memory anyway. So you can see in the registers, you know, it's a mess right there. So to clear memory on the PCM70, you hold the number zero while you power it on. You'll see the clear memory option once it boots. From there you hit load, and then it gives you the prompt, are you sure? In that case, you press one to acknowledge. So clearing memory. Now if I go into register, once it loads, system reset, it told me that. Okay, now it's reset. So if I go into register, you can see it's actually unused now. There's nothing in there which is good. So that looks to have solved that issue. So I'm back on the default, you know, zero, zero program for your basic chorus. So three, long haul, load, loading program. Okay, everything looks to be fine. Registers are still set to unused, which is good. I don't have the corrupted strings in there anymore. So that most likely fixed the problem. Again, I don't know the history of this. I don't know the status of this. I don't know why the memory was in that corrupted state. Could be various reasons. Uh, I'm not sure, but the battery is okay. I reset it. It seems fine right now. Let's power cycle it one more time. We look to be okay still. So. Alright, so I'm going to leave that be. The next order of business will be capacitors. So all of these look factory on this unit. The Lexicon actually used pretty decent capacitors in here. They're all only 85C rated, which is pretty much typical of any electronics you found at the time. But, you know, they're not no-named uh, capacitors. They've got some, I think they are Nishikons in here. They've got some Mitsubishis. These are actually Nippon Kemikons over here. So I'm going to start with the power supply. I'm going to for sure do these two, which are 1,000 microfarad at 35 volts. And you got two more tucked over here as well. Those are 50 microfarad at, I'm sorry, 330 microfarad at 50 volts. So I'm going to replace those four. And you got these two larger ones here. So the power supply is actually made up of your positive and negative regulators. You have a 7815, 7915. Uh, if you're positive and negative 15 volt rails, which drive all of your analog circuitry along with the actual digital analog converter. And then the 5 volt side, you've got a switching, uh, small switching supply made up of this uh, regulator here. This device may not be a regulator. And then the associated circuitry with the power supply here. And that provides multiple amps of 5 volt power for this. I mean, there's a lot of circuitry in here. This TTL stuff uses a lot of power. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if all of this was probably drawn, you know, two, three, four amps, it would totally be possible. Anyway, these bigger caps, because of their size, typically don't go bad. I will check and see if I have them. If I do, I may just replace them out of, uh, just because I have them, but I don't think I do. 3300 microfarad at 35 volt. So I'll have to check on those. But if you don't replace these, that's not a major deal. I haven't seen, you know, those typically go that bad. So we will start with these caps. So the actual capacitors I'm going to be using for the power supply circuit are made by Panasonic. They're part of their HD series of 105C rated caps, um, 1000 hours endurance on these things. So really good high quality caps. One thing I did notice I didn't before is that these uh, Nippon Chemicon caps in here are actually 105C rated. So realistically you probably don't need to replace those, but since I have them I'm going to do it anyway. Something else you want to keep note of too with these caps is that the size has significantly changed from the 70s to now. So these are both 3300 microfarad at 35 volt caps. So you can see the massive side difference. Uh, going the smaller size usually isn't problematic except for the footprint of the pins on the bottom of the board. Because it's smaller, the spacing of the existing pins is going to be a little bit wider. So you need to be careful when you're putting these in that you know you don't overstress the actual caps in terms of you know, wedging the pins down in there. Uh, package size matters too. Most of these caps will come in various package sizes in terms of diameter and height. So you need to make sure you get a, a package, if it's going to stand vertically, that will still fit in this unit. Depending how this pin spacing works, I may end up actually laying these on their side anyway, just because it will put less stress on the pins that way. But I won't know until I take it out and actually take a look and, and see how they fit in there. For the audio section, for the caps where the audio is actually passing through the caps, I'm going to be using ELNA caps. ELNA caps are really high quality cap designed for audio purposes. 
the good thing about them, the, the reason why they're good for audio is that they're actually tested and designed to have a very low ESR over a wide frequency range. So when you have different frequencies flowing through your circuit, you're going to have not big differences in the resistance of the circuit influenced by the capacitors. So ELNA will actually provide data sheets and spec sheets that actually show the performance of these caps, you know, under, you know, they do random samples over various frequency ranges, actually a pretty wide frequency range, and show you the results of how they spec out on there. So these are the ELNA Silmec 2, which are a pretty popular um, audio cap. Not the absolute super high end of their series. Uh, still really, really good. Uh, it's going to be spec most likely better than the original caps from the 70s that are currently in here now. These are 85C rated. They're not 105C rated. 105C rated caps you can do for the audio section, but they start to get really, really expensive. These are, you know, being 85 in here now, you know, they've lasted 30 some years and they've been fine. So this isn't a really hot section of the of the board compared to components in the power supply. Granted, the entire thing still gets warm because it's enclosed chassis, no vents, etc. But they will be fine, you know, using the 85C caps rated over here, specced in the, in the audio section. For any caps that actually don't have audio going through them or tied to you know any part of the audio circuitry that are just power supply, I will use the Panasonic's for those instead of the ELNAs. All right, so cap replacement is done. It took about 20, 30 minutes, not too bad. There really isn't that many capacitors on here. So here's all the old ones. None of them look that bad. There was a couple questionable that, you know, might have some traces of uh, electrolytes starting to leak out of there, but you know, for the most part, they were okay. So replacing these wasn't really about any type of you know, repair for this in terms of if they were bad. It's more of just future-proofing this device. You know, you're gonna have to replace these at some point. Again, I don't know the full history of this unit. I don't know how many hours it was on. I don't know how hot it got. They definitely had not been replaced before. These are all original. But by replacing them now, I'm just saving myself in the future of having to replace them then. So at the same time, you know, debatably, you may be improving audio quality by going to the higher quality caps. But you know, it, it, I'm not going to I'm not gonna argue that and try to state that as a fact. So it, it's a maybe. So for the caps back here, power supply caps, I was able to actually stand them vertically and they clear. So with the lid on, there's still plenty of clearance in between the cap and the, uh, and the top there for these ones as well. So if you are concerned because, you know, the previous caps had plastic top, these had metal, you know, top on there that's tied to the you know, ground pin, you could put a little piece of electrical tape on there just to make sure if there was ever any pressure on the top lid pushing down, it never came in contact with that. But it's pretty close to the edge right there. It, it, you know, you'd have to really push down on it and have it you know, conduct the center portion of those caps. So last step is just hook it up and see how it sounds. Make sure it all works. I got it plugged in there. We'll power it up real quick. And it still powers on. Always inspect the capacitors before you power it on too. Make sure you didn't miss any in terms of soldering. Make sure you got the polarities correctly. If you mess up a polarity, especially in the power supply, you're going to find out real quick that you have it wrong. So always be careful about that, especially in the power supply. Look over everything, make sure you got them all correct. But as you can see, we're powered up and everything else seems to be working just fine like it was before. I don't need to reset it again. Take good anti-static precautions when you're working on these. You work on an anti-static mat. The humidity in here is actually you know, not that low right now. It's not dry. So if you are in a drier environment, you probably should wear a wrist strap. Most of the you know logic in here, I discussed in the other video, it's primarily TTL. So it's not as resistant as CMOS to it, but at the same time, you want to be careful. You definitely don't want to hit, you know, some of the Lexicon DSP in here or a handful of large chips that are basically impossible to source. So be careful as you're working on these. So I'm back here at my rack and I've got the PCM70 back installed. And this will kind of be the final test just to make sure that, that everything on it is working you know, as it should. I've got the concert hall preset uh, loaded, which is one of my favorite presets. 
again, just a preset. This can do a lot more than the you know 40 or 50 or so presets that come with this. This is the version 2.0 firmware as well. I have the version 3.0 firmware. I haven't burnt it to EEPROMs and, and played with it yet, but I plan to do so sometime in the future. Right now, I've got the mix set pretty wet, 100% uh, actually, just to emphasize the reverb so it's easier to hear on the little microphone that I'm using to make this video. So. Put it in bypass. So a pretty, pretty big difference when it's set that heavy. Um, it's working great though. It sounds great. I haven't had any issues with it. I've had it on for a little bit here, probably 20, 30 minutes now, just kind of playing with it. And I'm very happy. So as I mentioned, this is a pretty good upgrade to do to any PCM70 that hasn't had it done before. This will increase the lifespan of it uh, considerably. So I would recommend doing so for any of the PCM70s or you know, other in the series out there. I've got a PCM60 that I'll be doing a repair video on here in the near future as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.